Good day again to everybody. Let's now proceed with our next lesson. And in this lesson, we will be dealing with what we call the conic section. So in this diagram, this diagram explains why we call this as the conic section. So we have four uh, curves to consider here. We have the circle, we have the parabola, we have the ellipse, we have the hyperbola. Actually, in some books, they don't consider circle as a conic section. But anyway, just for our discussion, let's just include the conic section, or the circle in the conic section, with this explanation that if we now consider a right circular cone, and if you will pass different types of planes through your circular cone, so for the circle, you pass a plane that is parallel to the circular base. If you remove this section, if you lift that up, you will now form a circle. For the parabola, if you pass a plane such that the plane will cross the circular base and that the plane is not perpendicular to the circular base, the figure formed here is a parabola. And then, this one, if you now pass a plane that will not pass through the circular base, and the plane is not parallel to the circular base, what we will be able to form is an ellipse. And finally, if you now pass a plane through your circular cone, which will now be passing through the circular base such that the plane will be perpendicular to the circular base, you get a hyperbola. But why do we have two diagrams here? Because if you will look at this, there is symmetry, there is a reflection, this is the other hyperbola, okay? Or, better still, ginawa niya na lang dito. Dalawang cones yung ginawa niya, passing a single plane. Get, uh, observing now, or obtaining now, our hyperbola. So, we will be discussing this one by one very quickly. So, for each conic section, our working equation for each is based from this general second degree equation involving two variables x and y. So, kung kukunin natin yung kompleto na second degree equation, meaning the highest exponent is 2, of two variables x and y, ito na yung pinakakompleto. So, we have ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to 0. Now, if we consider, if we consider a circle, Okay, so if we consider a circle, a circle will be given by the equation ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. In other words, based from this equation, anong yayari? b is equal to zero. Okay, so b is equal to zero, wala tong term involving x, y. Also, there's a condition that A will always be equal to C. A will be equal to C. Therefore, we can actually revise this by changing now our C by the value A. Okay? In words, a circle is a second-degree equation wherein the term xy is missing. For the terms involving x squared and y squared, their coefficients will be equal. And that will now be representing a circle. And this equation of the circle is what we call the general form. That's what we call the general form of the circle. And from the general form, we can transform this to another equation, which will be called as the standard form. And what's the significance of the standard form? The standard form of the circle will tell us some details of the circle. Okay. So for example, if we are now given this equation, and let's say we want to draw, and let's say we are instructed to draw this circle, the best way to draw this circle is by simply reducing this equation to the standard form. And what do we mean by the standard form? So when we talk about the standard form of the circle, 
it is given by the equation x minus h, the quantity squared, plus y minus k, the quantity squared, is equal to r squared. So that's the standard form of the circle. And the standard form of the circle gives us the location of the center, which will be at hk. Where did I get hk? hk. Okay. That will be the center. And then it will give us the radius of the circle is equal to r. This is r squared. So if we get now r, that will be the radius of the circle. So the standard form will tell us the location of the center and it will give us the radius of the circle. But the big question is how do we transform the equation of the circle into the standard form? Let's go to this example. So first step is isolate the constant. And after isolating the constant, let's also rewrite terms so that the terms involving x squared and x will be together. And then the terms involving y squared and y will be together. And then the constant is isolated. So that's step one. Isolate the constant, put the terms involving x squared and x together, y squared and y together. Then after that, step two is to make the coefficient of x squared and y squared be equal to 1. Since they are always equal, we can make those coefficients equal to 1. How? By simply dividing both sides of the equation, in this case by 2. And if we now divide both sides of the equation by 2, we now have x squared plus 6x plus y squared plus 6y equals 36 divided by 2 is equal to 18. So step 1, isolate the constant, put the terms involving x squared x, y squared, and y together. Step 2, make the coefficient of x squared and y squared be equal to 1 by simply dividing both sides by whatever numerical coefficient we have in the original equation. Then after that, this is not the crucial step. And please remember this step because we will be using this even in the next types of conic. And the next step is, uh, since this is a binomial raised to 2, if you will expand this, it is actually giving us a, uh, the expansion of this is actually a perfect squared binomial. That will be x squared minus 2h plus h squared. That's a perfect squared binomial. Okay. So if you will look at this part, x squared plus 6x, x squared minus 2h. Ang goal natin is from x squared plus 6x, we would like to create a perfect square trinomial. And how do we create a perfect square trinomial? To create a perfect square trinomial, this is what we do. We always add. We always add. What will we add? Get now the numerical coefficient of the term involving x. In this case, it's 6. Disregard the sign. Anyway, we will always add. Get the numerical coefficient of x. In this case, 6. Divide it by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then we square it. So get the coefficient of x is 6. We divide it by 2 and then we square it. And then for the terms involving y squared and y, we also do the same thing. We, we complete the squares. So we add. We we'll always add. Get the coefficient of y. In this case, nataon pareho silang 6. So 6 divided by 2. And we square it, that's equal to 9. Okay? But since this is an equation, the rule there is whatever you have added to the left side, you must also add it to the right side. So this is plus 3 squared plus 3 squared as well. Then after creating perfect squared trinomials, this is now a perfect squared trinomial. This is another perfect squared trinomial. We now factor those perfect square trinomials. We get the base, we get the sine, we get the base, that's 3, and then raised to 2. Plus, same thing here, factor the perfect square trinomial, that will be get the base, get the sine, get the base there, that's the shortcut, everything raised to 2. And then we simplify the right side, 9. Plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 18. 
36. So if you will look at this equation, if you like to rewrite this, this is x plus 3, the quantity squared, plus y plus 3, the quantity squared, equals 36, or 36 is 6 squared. Therefore, from this equation, it now tells us that, it now tells us that we have a circle. This equation represents a circle wherein the center is x minus h. So, h is minus 3. And then, y minus k, k my, must be minus 3. And then, the radius r is equal to 6. So, that's our circle. Its center is at minus 3, 3. And the radius is equal to 6. So, if we will now draw our circle, if we will now draw our circle, uh, okay, so wait, uh, this is not the correct diagram for this one. Let's insert a slide here. Just remember the details of your circle. The center is at minus 3, 3, and the radius is is positive 6. Okay. So let's draw this Cartesian plane. We have our, oops, we have our Cartesian plane here. This is our abscissa x. This is our ordinate y. This is our origin. And then, again, radius, uh, location is minus 3, 3. Minus 3, 3. Let me adjust this. Minus 3, 3. Okay, minus 3, 3. So let's complete our diagram now. Minus 3, 3. So if we will draw this, you have minus. Let's label our Cartesian plane. So we have minus 1, minus 3, minus 5, minus 1, minus 3, minus 5. So where is our ridge, uh, center? Center is at minus 3, minus 3. So it must be somewhere here. So that portion is our center, that's our center, and then the radius is, the radius is 6. So let's see if we can insert here a circle. Okay, so if we will now try to draw our circle, the center will be at, the center, natakta na siya. So the center is at, anyway, uh, Give me, we cannot insert the, the figure there. Anyway, let's let's take a remedy for this one. So if this is the center, and sabi doon, the radius is 6, diba? So you, you, you just need to measure 6 units. So gano ba kahaba yung 6 units, diba? That's 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 units. So 6 units, ganito, ganito kahaba yung radius. Ganyan kahaba. So if you now measure that length, so let's say that's the radius 6, and then you rotate it, you get your circle. The circle is having its center at minus 3, 3, and the radius is equal to 6. Of course, hindi ganun ka-accurate yung diagram ko, obviously, but I hope that uh, you will still understand kung ano yung nangyari sa. So you have your center, and then you have your radius. Okay? So in the same token, pwede rin baliktad yung problem. Pwede yung problem, given yung center, given yung radius, you can write the equation of the circle. So, to write the equation of the circle, pwede mo i-substitute yung center, yung radius sa standard form. If you want to expand, you get the general form. Okay? So, that's for the circle. So, again, review lang quickly natin yung circle. Dalawang square terms. Wala yung x, y. Yung square terms, pareho yung coefficients. So, paano natin i-reduce yung general form to the standard form? Isolate the constant. And then, step 2, make the coefficient of x squared and y squared equal to 1. Step 3, 
complete the squares. Paano mag-complete the squares? So, yung sa terms involving x, divide the, always add, always add, divide the coefficient of x by 2, square it. Dito, always add, divide the coefficient of y by 2, then square it. Whatever you have added to the left side, make sure you also add it to the right side of the equation. Ah, for your perfect square trinomials, simplify your right side, then that will give you the standard form of the circle. How do you find or the or how do you draw the graph of the circle? From your standard form, you have the details, you have your center, you have your radius, then draw the circle. Okay, so next stop will be for the parabola. I think I'll just do a separate video for this one para hindi masyadong mahal.